His math professor does not speak English. So I received an email from a viewer. This is a fairly recent email. And the subject is, my math professor does not speak English. Let's just jump into it right away. I'm going to read the email and then I'll do my best to answer it. So this is something that comes up a lot. The person's name, I will leave out of it. And the subject is help. My math professor does not speak English. I'm also going to leave uh, certain things out of the email because this person requested that uh, I leave them out. Hey, I have a bit of a dilemma. I'm taking a pretty basic pre-calculus course at a certain university. Our math professor is from, let me just say, a certain place. And he's been teaching here for 10 years. However, I cannot understand his accent whatsoever. I do not want to make fun of it or anything, but it is extremely frustrating because I learn the most from lectures. Not only is he difficult to understand while teaching math, his general English is almost intelligible. He is a great guy and he tells us his stories about managing and applying mathematics in a company in a certain place, which is cool, but that doesn't help my learning. The good news is our exams are literally open everything. He allows us to use laptops, notebooks, and textbooks. Today, I even used ChatGPT for my first exam and got an 88. Pretty good for a class I didn't learn anything in. This doesn't feel very good or right. This will be my last mathematics class I will take for my four years here, but I want to take some pretty advanced calculus classes in the future after graduating at community colleges. And I don't feel at all prepared, even somewhat, to get into calculus. Calculus is so useful for research projects that I do not know what I would do without it, but I don't know what to do. What would you do in my scenario? How would you study math? Should I just simply go to a tutor? We are using Fundamentals of Pre-Calculus, second edition by Dugo Polsky for reference. Okay, and we are in chapter 2.1 right now. Okay, so first let me just comment on something you said. Pretty good for a class I didn't learn anything in. This doesn't feel very good or right. So, you know, English aside, the fact that you feel like you're not learning anything and you're able to use all the stuff for your tests. I mean, that's great, right? Because you can get an A. I mean, that's good, right? I mean, uh, but it's also kind of sad. I've seen this happen in other classes. I knew someone who took a computer science class and it was like the easiest class in the world. And they were always telling me how they didn't learn anything and everything was just a joke and everyone got an A. And it's just like, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's it's not good and it's not right, but there's nothing you can really do to change that. So what can you do? Let's answer your other questions. What can you control? Because there's certain things you can't control and that's something you can't control, right? You can't control how the teacher structures his class if he just decides to let everyone, you know, use chat GPT or whatever. I mean, it is what it is, as they say, which is not an expression I like, but I feel like it's appropriate in this scenario. Um, what would I do in your scenario? Uh, in your scenario, I, I guess I would just try to do some self-study and try to learn as you know much as you can on your own. Um, I'd recommend getting other pre-calc books. Um, I have one here. It's called uh, Pre-Calculus and it's by uh, Stuart Redlin and Watson. And I just picked this one for this video because I think it's a really good one. There's other great pre-calc books uh, the one you're using is pretty good too. This one, this one is excellent and you can probably get it used. I'll try to leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. So I would definitely do self-study and just try to learn as much as you can on your own. Uh, I'm sorry that you're in a situation uh, that you're in. Um, and when I say that, the situation that you're in, I, I just don't think it's very good that it's like open everything. I know it's probably like an unpopular opinion to put out there on the internet, right? Because everyone wants an open book test. But I mean, you learn more when you study for tests. I mean, no one likes studying for tests. I hate tests, right? I mean, <laughs> it's way more fun to give tests than to take them. But like, you know, you got to learn somehow. 
Um, but you can learn from homework. You know, I, I took a class once where I didn't have any tests and I learned a lot. So do self-study and hopefully that will that will help you. You also said it's the last math class you're going to take for your four years there. Um, that That's kind of sad, you know, but again, self-study should be a way to remedy, remedy it. As far as the accent thing, you know, the math professor does not speak English. I've had math professors that uh, had really thick accents. I had one for uh, a discrete math class and he uh, had a really thick accent uh, and he was from, he was from somewhere in the Middle East and because he had such a thick accent, he taught really, really slowly. So he was like an incredible teacher. Like he was aware that his accent was very thick and he was hard to understand. So he would talk very slowly and teach very slowly. He was awesome. He was he was like a legendary teacher. He was just an amazing guy. And I learned so much in that class with his bad English. Uh, at the same time, um, sometimes you know, not speaking English correctly can cause confusion. You know, certain words uh, can be mispronounced or things can be said the wrong way. And math is already hard enough. So when you throw in the language barrier, that makes it even harder, right? It makes it even harder. So um, I would just do self-study. That's That would be my advice. Try to embrace self-study. At the same time, try to embrace the fact that you're going to get uh, an easy A, right? You're going to get an easy A. Um, you asked if you should go to a tutor. Yeah, if you have tutoring services at your school, which you probably do, you probably have some type of like tutoring center or academic success center. They usually give it a name where you can go in and you can get free tutoring. Go in there and then just, you know, learn what you can. Uh, it's an unfortunate situation, but it's one that I'm sure that a lot of the people watching this video uh, can relate to, right? Um, I took a cryptography class once and the guy's accent was so thick. He was from, I think he was from Korea and he had this really thick accent, but he was awesome. He was awesome because again, he went slow. So like in my experience, um, you know, the teachers I've had with thick accents, I've been able to understand them either because they're phenomenal teachers or because they slow down and they work extra hard in order to overcompensate for their accent. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. So hopefully my uh, response has been helpful to you. Um, if anyone else has advice for how to deal with uh, a situation like this, uh, you know, leave a comment. Again, my advice, don't do anything. Just do self-study, you know, you're going to get an A. <laughs> so, and then hopefully, hopefully it works out. It is unfortunate, but I don't know if there's anything you can do or anything you should do. Also, something else to keep in mind is that if you're feeling this way, um, a lot of the other people in your class are probably feeling this way. So you might be tempted to like say something. And I'm sure some people would say something. I'm sure some people will leave comments in this video like, hey, you should do something about it. You should say something. I've always tried to take a very passive approach when it comes to stuff like this. You just control what you can, right? Just you're there to learn, do what you can, be grateful that your tests are easy, try to focus on self-study and teach yourself the mathematics. If, if it's any consolation for me, okay, this is just my experience. On average, in every single math class, I maybe understood 60% of what was taught, okay, 60%. And so I feel like I ended up teaching myself a lot of times. In fact, when I decided to study math, I told myself that I was going to teach myself mathematics in order to get this degree because I did not want to rely on anybody else for my success. I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> and so when you, when you make that decision, when you make that connection, I think it makes experiences like this easier to deal with because they're going to happen again or they'll happen in different ways. Maybe you'll get another teacher they don't have a bad accent. They, you, know, they, you, you can understand their English. It's just you just can't understand their math. Or maybe they stand in front of the board while they teach. I mean, you see all kinds, right? The more math classes you take, the more teachers you get to experience. And, you know, the more good teachers you see and the more not so good teachers you see. And so you get to see it all. You get to see it all. So hopefully my reply has helped. And again, this book here, Pre-Calc, uh, by Stuart. It's a great book. Stuart, this is the guy who also has that really famous calculus book, uh, calculus. So 
Anyways, kind of a long reply. If anyone has advice for this person who is having a hard time with their math professor who they do not understand, leave a comment. Oh, oh, one more thing, one more thing before I end this video, just to give the different, just to give the perspective of of the math professor. Um, just a quick story. I had a a friend when I was in grad school, and uh, this is kind of sad story, but I'll, I'll I'll end with the sad story. And uh, I, he has his PhD now in physics. I, I I internet stalked him. He didn't finish his PhD. He got his PhD in physics, and he had a master's in physics from India. And he uh, had a really strong accent. And because he had such a strong accent, they wouldn't let him teach his first year. And that affected him. It also affects, uh, a lot of times it'll affect how much you get paid. So like if you're a grad student and your English is not as good, um, you don't get paid as much sometimes that happens. Like, cause, it, cause if there's, there's like a test you have to pass. Different schools do it different ways. So um, it, is, it is a disadvantage for him as well. I'm sure he's he's had some some stuff to deal with. And um, th the part I don't like about your email is that he's kind of like overcompensating perhaps for his poor teaching by making everything super easy, which is not a good way to do it. Again, in my experience, teachers with really strong accents, what I've seen that makes them successful is they go really slow and they explain everything very carefully. And at that point, they just become the best teacher ever, right? Because if you go at a really comfortable pace and you explain things slowly, that's how people learn. So anyways, kind of a rant. Hopefully everything works out and hopefully this video has helped someone out there. Anyways, good luck and just keep doing your self-study, man. Take care.